Hello everybody, welcome to another tier list video where I rank every single weapon in Albion Online. The last video I did on this is a little bit outdated, so I'm going to be reviewing it all and re-ranking everything on this new tier list. Now this video will quite likely be pretty long, so I'm going to put timestamps or chapters down so you can go to your favorite weapon line or your favorite weapon and find it and see what I think of it and where I rank it. Okay, so real quick before we start, I'm just going to give a brief description of the tiers and how I'm ranking things. So first off, the tiers at the top, we have S tier. These are like your super overpowered weapons that definitely need to be nerfed. One criteria is that they're not like super good for just one activity, but really good across the entire game of Albion. A is like your super strong meta defining weapons that you're going to see really consistently throughout Albion that are used in either like meta defining for their activity or used very much in lots of activities just super strong weapons overall b tier is very similar to a except slightly worse uh, because then c tier is weapons that have their own little niche that are good for like their one specific thing but they can't really move out there too well or are like used in an activity pretty well but aren't really used outside of that at all D tier is weapons that are good but not great like they can be really good weapons but they are not currently really used for anything in the meta i'm basing a lot of this on like what's currently used in the meta so d tier would be like things that you don't really see in the meta as in there are just better options currently than them but they're not necessarily bad weapons e tier is just bad weapons so d tier but worse just weapons that you really shouldn't be using right now they need a buff they need some love before they can get back into at least D or C tier. Lastly, F tier is weapons that are just memes, like literally no use for them. They're, they're just garbage. For how I'm ranking them, it will be sort of personal opinion and preference looking at both the meta and just like what I personally think of the weapon. One thing is that I'm not really going to be including their fame farmability. This is mostly going to be oriented towards a PvP tier list. However, if a weapon does have like one of its features that it's very good at fame farming, I will include that in my consideration of the weapon. If it's just like a standard weapon that's usually used for PvP but can be used for fame farming pretty well, I'm not really Really gonna look at its ability to fame farm but if it is a weapon that is constantly used for fame farming and it's like one of the top tier ones then that will be considered lastly one quick note unfortunately i couldn't make a tier list this tier list wasn't site wasn't really working for me so these are the old icons for frost and arcane i might overlay them after once the tier late is done in the video editing process but uh, it's just the arcane and the frost are the old icons so don't get mixed up by those so starting us off with Arcanes, first we have, they're in no particular order, first we have the Evensong. Evensong is, I'm going to put it right into A tier right now, Evensong is ridiculously strong and meta defining after the Arcane changes, but pretty much only for small scale PvP. So in 5v5 like arenas, this thing is completely and utterly busted, but... It really doesn't see any use outside of that. It's obviously very good still for like 10v10s and stuff. It's just there's a different meta for those, so it doesn't really shine. The weapon is definitely really strong and probably does need a nerf. It could honestly like go maybe in S tier, except it's really only good for 5v5 right now or only really used in 5v5 right now, so it kind of has to go in A tier. Next, we have the Locus, and I'm putting Locus in, I'm going to say, C tier. I mean, it is a ZVZ niche weapon. It's incredibly good for ZVZs. You need Locuses in your ZVZs or really any Zerg fights out in the Black Zone. But besides that, it's not really ever used because it's sort of niche, so it goes in C tier. Which work is... The next one on the list, and again, I'm going to put this into C tier, I think. It could maybe go B tier. Um, it's currently not used all that much, but that's mostly just probably because other arcanes are really good. Uh, it does have a lot of potential. It's a very good weapon, but really right now it's only really used um, sort of nichely in like the ZVZ and open world large group fight environment. Next we have the one-handed arcane and this weapon again with the arcane changes arcanes are really strong right now so this is a very good weapon but I am going to put it into D tier despite it being a really strong weapon just because as I had mentioned similar to the witch work other arcanes are just so strong right now that it kind of just has to go in D tier because 
other arcanes are just too good. I mean, it's a very strong weapon. You can definitely be very successful with it, but it is outshined by other arcanes. Not outshined by other weapons, outshined by other arcanes specifically. It's definitely still really good. You can definitely still run it and have a lot of success with it, uh, but it is outshined by things like Evensong right now, so it goes in D tier. Next is the Enigmatic Staff, and this could... Uh, it could go in E tier. I'm going to put it in D tier as well. Enigmatic is a suit, like it's so strong if you can get it off consistently and reliably. But the fact that like a life curse staff, which we'll talk about later in the curse staff, exists, it completely 100% counters this weapon, and it's pretty much run all the time. So it has a 100% counter that is like pretty much run all the time. So you don't really like it doesn't it rarely gets the value that it could get. Meaning. Um, it's just not great. Another reason it's not great, we're going to skip a cult and go right to the Great Arcane, is because it's just completely outshined by the Great Arcane right now. The Great Arcane is could honestly go in S tier, but again, it's sort of niche just for ZVZs. This weapon is just so dumb. You freeze your own allies, making them immune to damage uh, when the enemy's trying to clump and dump them, and then they just don't take any damage. And so clump and dumps are really hard to do now because of this one weapon. It is so strong. It counters the clump and dump style so hard. It is completely meta-defining in the large-scale open world fights. Lastly, for Arcanes, we have the Occult Staff, and this is going to go in our E tier. Um, this weapon is just not really that useful. The E that it does is helpful, but compared to other weapons, E's, it's just not helpful enough. Maybe in a different meta where, like, rotating around really quickly on foot was important, uh, it might be really good but right now it's just it's not worth running in a cult i will say it is very good for like the one specific thing of helping your cores run fast if you go in the open world and gather power cores uh, you can help your cores get to hideouts faster by laying down a cult but that's really all it's good for and that's not really a an activity that i would consider worthy of putting in c tier and so it goes in e tier all right, next up we have axes. First on the list is our Realm Breaker, and this is going right into A tier. Realm Breaker is probably the strongest axe right now, and just in general for group play, especially the debuff that it does on the E is just so impactful. A knockup plus a health reduction, the E is just so unbelievably powerful for any composition or any meta where bursting down targets is important. It does a lot of damage, knocks them up so they can't get their defensive off, and lowers their HP, meaning it's much easier to one-shot them. So it's just super good in the meta right now, which is really heavy in one-shot. Pretty much anything with 10 man plus groups is a one-shot comp right now, whether that's clump and dump or one-shotting one person. Salt Realm Breaker is super heavily used meta-defining for those. Definitely a super strong weapon. Next, we have the Bear Paws, and this is going to be our first B tier weapon. Bear Paws are pretty niche in that they're very, very good for like solo open world PvP and ganking. Uh, so they could go C tier. However, they do have a little bit of versatility. They can pretty much play in any group as well in the open world. They're not the best option for axes for group play. As I just said, like Realm Breaker is probably better than them in pretty much every situation, but they are still good for it. And they can be used by gatherers to like run away and stuff. And they're just a super strong right now in general for like solo play. So I want to put them a little bit above uh, C tier. They're definitely really strong, especially in that solo open world aspect. Uh, pretty solid B tier option. Next, we have the Battle Axe. Um, this one could either go in D or E. I'm going to put it in D. It's not a particularly great weapon. Like, there's no activity that I'd want to say I want to bring a Battle Axe. It does have, like, some very limited viability. Like, there's some corrupted dungeon builds you can probably run. It's okay in the open world. Uh, it's just, it's so outshined by so many other things right now. They don't really know what to do with the battle axe. It feels like every time they change it, it's either completely overpowered or really underwhelming. Right now it's underwhelming, so it just goes in D tier. Could honestly probably go in E tier, but I know there's a lot of people that love this weapon, so I'm going to put it in D tier just to uh, honor those people. Maybe they know something I don't. Next is Infernal Scythe. Infernal Scythe is a pretty niche weapon, like it's an execute weapon, but Bloodletter exists and Bloodletter does its job a little bit better. There could, I could envision a meta where Infernal Scythe is good, but right now it's just not. Um, really, there are, it's, it's the classic. Infernal Scythe is not a bad weapon, but there are better options, and that better option is typically the Bloodletter. So it goes in D tier. Not a bad weapon, but it is just outshined.
Next we have the Halberd, and we can pretty much say the same thing for Halberd as we can for the Infernal Scythe, a solid D tier weapon. It's good, like the Halberd is a decent weapon, but it is outshined right now. Melee DPS right now, uh, the options for it are pretty slim. There's some weapons for melee DPS that are super strong, and so everything else that isn't one of those weapons feels like it's just, why would you play it over some of those other stronger options? So Halberd, not a bad weapon, but not in the meta right now because it's just outshined by some really, really strong options that uh, do similar things to it. Next, we have Carrion Collar. This is like the definition of a niche weapon. You basically literally never see this thing except for in 5v5s where it has been a staple coming sort of in and out of the meta, but usually in the meta and it is right now for that like crystal 5v5 arena sort of stuff. Really good for that, but outside of that, not super good. So it's just a niche goes in C tier. Lastly, for axes, we have the Great X, and this is also going to go into D tier. It could honestly go in E tier. Um, the one thing that is a saving grace for Great X is that it is very forgiving. The fact that you cannot interrupt the E, you pretty much just spin to win no matter what happens to you, means it's very easy, pretty consistent, so it goes in D tier. But again, it's just outshined by other weapons. There's no really activity or fight in the game where I would want to see a Great X over some other melee DPS weapon, so it's just D tier. Moving on to bows now, starting with our Miss Piercer. Miss Piercer is another D tier weapon. It's it's all right. I mean, it's it's okay. It's pretty okay for group fights. You can do a lot of damage, but it takes a lot of time to that damage. It's reflectable. Um, so really, I mean, in like the ZVZ meta that it's typically used for, there are better range DPS options right now. So it's C tier. Not a great weapon. A very, very similar thing can be said about our next option in the Wailing Bow. Uh, it's, again, pretty much exclusively a ZVZ weapon, and again, there are just better options right now in the bow tier especially, or in the bow category especially, so it's not that bad. It can work with some really, like, Hellion Shoe burst damage builds, but um, it's just, it, it's not good enough to really be used in the meta, so it's D tier. Next is Whispering Bow, and again, bows are getting another D tier. Whispering Bow is okay in the open world, but uh, not great. There again are better options. Really, there's no place in the meta for Whispering Bow. There's no activity that you'd think, oh, Whispering Bow is good for this. It's all right in the open world. That's really where it shines. But again, we have other weapons like, say, Bear Paws, for example, that are just much, much better than it at the moment. Next is Bow of Badon, and Bow of Badon is going to go into our, I'm going to say C tier. So Bow of Badon, in terms of PvP, is pretty niche in terms of it's basically just a corrupted dungeon weapon, and right now it's not that great in the meta. It's definitely usable, you can be really successful with it, uh, but it's definitely not top tier in the meta, so it would normally go into D tier. However, Badon is a classic group fame farm weapon. It is very good. That constant interrupt makes it much, much easier to group fame farm, so um, because of its uh, outstanding fame farm performance, we'll put it into C tier in that niche category, either as a corrupted dungeon or a group fame farm weapon. Next is Warbow, very similar to Badon, although it is a mostly a corrupted dungeon weapon or solo open world PvP weapon in corrupted dungeons. It is probably one of the top picks right now. Uh, quite a solid corrupted dungeon weapon, and it's decent in the open world. Not great in the open world, but pretty decent. So it's niche. It's very good for corrupted dungeons right now. Not as good for open world, but still decent at it. So it's C tier. Next is the longbow, and this is going to be our first bow that isn't in the bottom half of the tier list. This is actually going right up to our A tier. Longbow is the best choice for bows, and honestly, maybe best choice for range DPS, period, for large-scale fights like ZVZs. It has a lot of damage on a very short cooldown, 15 seconds, and it delivers that damage pretty fast and reliably, so it's just a super solid option. Also happens to be probably the best bow for fame farming, so it's just uh, all around pretty good. Lastly for bows, we have the normal bow, and the normal bow is, again, another D tier option for bows. Normal bow, really good at shredding a single target, but right now in the corrupted dungeon meta, it's not that good. That sort of style of play isn't super good in the current meta for corrupted dungeons. In 5v5s, where it also sometimes finds success, again, just outshined by the even song and other ranged DPS options, so it... It's not necessarily bad, it's still very good for targeting down a single person and blowing them up, but it is just 
pretty much completely outshined by other weapons that have gotten some newer, fresher quality of life updates. Moving on to crossbows, first we have the energy shaper. Uh, the energy shaper, I know I said longbow is like the best ZVZ weapon for range APS, but energy shaper can sort of share that role. The very weird thing about raiding an energy shaper is while it is super good, does like the most damage of any weapon in the game, like this thing does ridiculous amount of damage in a giant AoE, uh, but it cannot stack with other energy shapers. So you can only really one, run like one or two of them in like a ZVZ, for example. Uh, so it doesn't really get A tier, uh, but I want to put it above C tier. So it's going to go B tier because it is super, super strong. It's just you can only run like one or two of them, and it does have a lot of counterplay being deflectable and having a longer cooldown, having to stand still, all that stuff. It's like the, the ultimate glass cannon group weapon. Next is the Weeping Repeater. Um, this thing, again, like if you're going to ZVZ with a crossbow, you want to go ideally for the Energy Shaper. Another ZVZ weapon, it's not all that great right now. Definitely outshined by things like the Longbow and the Energy Shaper, as we just touched on. Uh, it can have limited success with like a cheesy Hellion Shoe bombing build, but to do that, you really need to be in like super, super high IP 8.3 sort of stuff to make it work. So it's extremely niche and usually outshined. Similarly, we have the Siege Bow, another ZVZ-based crossbow, and again, just outshined by other ranged DPS weapons. You typically want to see a longbow over it or an energy shaper over it, so it's okay, but again, outshined by other weapons. Next is the Heavy Crossbow. Heavy Crossbow is going to join our Occult in E tier. There's, there's just no situation where I'd ever want to see anybody playing a heavy crossbow. The weapon's just not good right now. I, I don't think it has any, like, real use. I can't imagine an activity where I would think, yeah, heavy crossbow would be good for this. There's just always completely better options. It just doesn't do enough right now. Just an overall bad weapon. Next is our light crossbow. Light crossbow used to be, like, a staple of, like, small-scale, good, consistent DPS. Uh, but... The other weapon lines that do good, consistent DPS are Frost and, well, now Arcane, which just got reworked, and they're fancy, and they're new, and they're really overpowered compared to Crossbow now, so it just goes D tier, because now if you want a ranged DPS roll to do good, consistent damage, you pick an Arcane, not a Crossbow, so it's still as good as it used to be, just other things are better now. Not a bad weapon, but outshined. Next is one-shot crossbow or two-handed crossbow. Again, D tier option. This thing is very niche. Uh, it can kind of get used in ganking, kind of get used in group fights to like pick off important targets, uh, but it's very hard to play successfully. It's incredibly niche. Uh, definitely not deserving of C tier. It's it's not really doesn't really have an activity that it's really good at, um, but it has potential. It's definitely a strong weapon. It's just, yeah, super niche, super hard to pull off, and I would shine by other things. Lastly, for our crossbows, we have the bolt casters, and bolt casters are getting themselves into the nice E tier. Another crossbow in E tier. Crossbows do not have a lot of love right now. Uh, bolt casters are just not good, way too easily to counter them. So, in things like Corrupted Dungeons, they just get completely dumpstered by like the majority of builds. They don't really have any place in any open world activity due to the lack of mobility, and so their really only use is in like PvE boss killing. So like, I'm not sure if they're used in Avalonian dungeons right now, but possibly a use in Avalonian dungeons, like mage raiding and stuff, but even then I'd probably rather see different weapons. So maybe they could go in D tier, I'm not super caught up on like the PvE meta for boss killing and stuff, but I don't really consider that a super important meta, so we're putting them in E tier. Moving on to Curse Stabs, first we have the Great Curse, and Great Curse can go into the E tier. Uh, not a good weapon right now. Uh, curse Stabs, again, sort of similar to Crossbows, have sort of fallen out of favor. The rework wasn't as big as other weapons, and so the sort of consistent pressure that they normally produce and normally are picked for. Uh, just other things are picked over them, like the Arcanes. Great Curse, especially just just getting Curse Stabs stacks on people with its E, which is pretty much its entire purpose, is not that valuable right now. So it's just pretty much a bad weapon right now. You really don't want to see a Great Curse in really anything. 
Next we have the Demonic Staff. And this thing, despite what I just said about Cursed Staffs being bad, is a tier meta defining. Uh, this one's a really weird one to rank though. So the thing about Cursed Staffs is generically they're pretty bad right now except for one particular ability which is armor piercer on the w is incredibly valuable and incredibly strong ability right now and so you see curse staffs in a fair amount of activities and you basically always see demonic staff when it is a curse staff because it uses that armor piercer sort of play style around armor piercer the best so while Demonic may not be like an A-tier weapon in itself. You kind of have to put it in A-tier because it is so prevalent in any sort of group fights that want to use that armor piercer. It pretty much always uses Demonic, so it is in that way, it is meta-defining. Next, we have the Cursed Skull. This is a D-tier option. Uh, Cursed Skull is sort of neat. like you guys use for Corrupted Dungeons sometimes, can be used in like large group fights, but right now it's just really not in the meta, outshined by a lot of other weapons, both for group fights and for Corrupted Dungeons. Again, not a bad weapon. You can still be successful with it, just is outshined right now. Next is the Damnation Staff. This is a classic C tier option. Damnation Staff is pretty much exclusively used for ZVZs and for ZVDs, ZVZs, sorry, it is pretty important to have one of them at least because the pierce that it applies is very good, very big AoE, big pierce, very good for engagements in ZVZs, but outside of that, pretty much not super good. It can be used for like group fame farming, but generally just a ZVZ weapon for that purpose, very strong, but outside of that, not really used. Next, we have the Life Curse Staff. Life Curse Staff is another A tier curse staff, although it is the, probably the only curse staff that isn't used for its pierce. Life Curse is E, the ability to constantly purge buffs of enemies in an AoE is extremely strong. Remember when we were talking about the Enigmatic Staff, it completely 100% counters things that could be really strong, like the Enigmatic. Pretty much any defensive in a group fight that is thrown on a clump gets purged off by the Life Curse, so it is meta-defining for group play. If there was no such thing as a Life Curse, we'd see a completely different meta, like, um, for example, Enigmatics being used a ton in group play, but they're not because the Life Curse exists. Definitely meta-defining for big group fights. Next is the normal one-handed curse staff. And again, this can, I can basically say the exact same thing as I did for the curse skull for this. Can be used in small scale or solo PvP, but is pretty much outshined right now. Not great in corrupted dungeons. Okay in the open world, although usually mobility style weapons like the bear paws perform better than it. So not a bad weapon, but again, outshined. Lastly, on Cursed Staffs, we have the Shadow Collar. Shadow Collar is another D tier option. It has potential, it can be a very good weapon, but it requires either a ton of coordination with your team or just a really good player. In the hands of a really good player, it can shine a lot, but it is super niche. It is incredibly difficult to use, so it's typically you're not really going to see it run anywhere. There are pretty much just better options. Next, we have daggers. Starting out with our claws for daggers. Claws are in C tier. Claws are a ganking weapon. That's what they do. That's what they've always done. They're pretty much not used for anything else but ganking, but for ganking, they can be extremely strong. So they go in C tier. They're super niche, but really good at what they do. Next is death givers. Death givers are probably D tier right now. They've sort of shifted around in the meta what they're used for. Sometimes small scale PvP, sometimes corrupted dungeons, sometimes open world PvP. Right now, not really used for anything. They're pretty much outshined by all other options. They can have success. Again, they can be a good weapon, but there are better options. Next is Dagger Pair, uh, and this m maybe could go in C tier, but I'm going to put it in D tier. Dagger Pair is really exclusive in the meta, pretty much only for 2v2 PvP. Uh, can be used occasionally in like 1v1s when they're really strong, but right now they're not really strong. And in 2v2s right now, they are outshined by another option. So they're, they can be successful in 2v2s in their environment, but the other option is considered better right now and run way more, which we'll talk about later. It's the Claymore spoiler. Um, but yeah, so right now it, it's a good weapon, can be successful, but again, outshined. Next, we have the one-handed dagger. One-handed dagger is a weird one. I mean, it's not really particularly good for any activity. It goes D tier. Um, again, it can be like, if you've seen me, I, I use the one-handed dagger occasionally in videos. I like the weapon. Can be very good for PvP, but it's just 
typically not. If an opponent knows what they're doing, it's really easy to counter, and so it goes into D tier, not really meta for any activity, too easy to counter, has a lot of potential, but hard to reach that potential. I will quickly interject here that the one-shot version of the one-handed dagger sort of did die off, but it is making a slight comeback with a slightly different build in Corrupted Dungeons, so maybe if that takes off, this could go up to C tier, but uh, I haven't really seen that be too, too successful yet, so we'll, we'll have to see on that one, but it probably goes D tier for now. Next, we have the Bridled Furies, and this is going to go into C tier. Uh, it's niche. It's like the group PvP dagger uh, before the Demon Fang, which we'll talk about in a second. A pretty good clap weapon, does a ton of damage. It is reflectable again, so uh, makes it not quite as good as it could be, but you can definitely see Bridal Theories a lot. Super strong weapon. They are a little bit overshadowed right now, but I still do want to put them in C tier because they are a super good weapon still. Um, they are a little bit overshadowed by the Demon Fang though, but I still think they deserve a C tier. Skipping the blood letter, because we just talked about it. the Demon Fang is going to go in the A tier. This thing is ridiculously strong right now. Actually, it just got nerfed after I'm making this video. It did get nerfed a couple days ago. However, even after the nerfs, it hasn't really changed this place in the meta. It still seems to be run in all the places it was run before, and it feels just as strong, or not just as strong, but pretty much as strong. The nerf wasn't too hard on it, uh, so I do still think, at least right now, it is definitely still an A-tier meta-defining melee DPS weapon. The damage it can output with the options that it has is just absurd. It does a ton of damage, good AoE. I mean, it's just everything you want from like this sort of clappy-style melee DPS weapon. Lastly, for daggers, we have the Blood Letter, and Blood Letter is going to slot into B tier. Uh, Blood Letter is just like, it's a staple of PvP in general. I mean, solo PvP, group PvP, anything, it's an execute, so it is good. We talked about the Infernal Scythe before, it just does the executes slightly better than Infernal Scythe can, so it gets used pretty much whenever you want an execute. It's not A tier, definitely not meta defining, definitely not super OP. You can see a lot of comps that don't run Blood Letter, uh, so it's not that good right now but it is just a super solid weapon both in solo and in group play so really good weapon overall next we have fire stabs and i will say i'm not 100 percent confident on my ratings for fire stabs i personally don't use fire stabs basically at all and spoiler alert i also don't really ever see them used so uh, it's really hard to place them in the meta uh, but starting off with infernal staff this thing got the probably biggest rework of all the fire staffs in the fire changes and I have not seen this thing pretty much at all. I don't want to put it E tier because I know it definitely does have some potential so we'll put it in D tier. I don't really see it so it definitely doesn't deserve going above here but it doesn't seem like a bad weapon so we'll put it D tier. Next is the blazing staff and uh, you could either put this in C tier or in D tier. This is not a PvP weapon at all. Blazing Staff is pretty much never good for PvP outside of some like cheesy combos. However, it is extremely good for group fame farming. So for that reason, I could put it in C tier. Uh, we'll put it in C tier. Why not? Group fame farming is what this weapon is used for. Outside of that, you're probably not going to see it at all. So definitely niche towards that. But it is incredible amount of damage over time against mobs and stuff like that. Next is the Brimstone. Brimstone's probably the one fire staff that I actually see in the meta, and it's pretty much only for ZVZ. Still a super strong ZVZ option. Uh, definitely good range DPS. Not as good as the Longbow, I would say, but definitely still quite good. So, Z tier, it has its niche, but outside of that, not really used. Next is the Wildfire Staff. This thing definitely has potential still got nerfed a while back. It used to be really popular. Not as much anymore. It's strong, but it's not super strong it's not strong enough that you would actually see it used in pvp in the metas so it goes into d tier again outshined by some like more previous uh, or more more recent reworks in like the arcane and stuff that just does uh, more damage than it does maybe not more damage but it, it just gets outshined by them next is the uh dumbledore is what i call it i don't know what its actual name is it's not even song it's something else song again d tier it has potential. This thing can do a lot of damage in like small scale PvP, but you're typically going to see other weapons instead of it. Long cooldown isn't as viable. The anti heal in the meta isn't as viable as some other things right now. So, not a bad weapon, but again, outshined. 
Next we have the one-handed fire staff. Again, D tier. Um, usually one-handed fire will show up in things like corrupted dungeons and again similar to like the normal bow. The meta that is sort of just like sitting there and pumping out a bunch of damage isn't as popular right now and fire staffs sort of get outbeaten in the kite game by things like warbow right now so it's really just not as good as other options. Can be good i mean the damage that it outputs is still pretty decent but um just not currently really used in the meta outshined by other weapons lastly for fire staffs we have the great fire this could arguably be put into c tier it's probably the best like fire staff out of all the fire staffs for smaller scale pvp however Fire staffs aren't really used for small scale PvP. It's definitely, I would put the Great Fire above all of these other four fire staffs in terms of how good it is. It has like a limited viability. So, like in like the 10v10 meta, for say, like it's not used in like the best comps, but it would use, be used in like the second best comp. So, it, it, it does have potential, but I don't think it quite deserves to go into C tier because it's not actively used. So we'll put it into D tier. Definitely the best out of these, but not quite good enough to go into C tier. Next we have the Frost Staves, which very recently received a rework and are very bad. <laughs> Spoiler alert. Uh, so starting off, we have the Great Frost, which I would probably say is the single best Frost Staff right now. It was extremely overpowered, uh, but then it got nerfed. And the nerf, I think people are a little bit underestimating it just because it feels a lot worse after it was nerfed. However, it's still probably the best Frost Staff overall. So it goes in C tier instead of D tier, I want to say. It's not currently used like super actively in the meta. Uh, some people do run it um, and have success with it. It's definitely sort of similar to the Great Fire and it's like the second option for a lot of uh, ranged DPS comps. I'm going to put it in C tier though instead of D tier because I do think people are sleeping on it a little bit after the nerfs. Whenever something gets nerfed, people typically people will overreact just a little bit because it feels bad after the nerf but it's probably still pretty strong so it goes in c tier next we have glacial staff this thing was used for 20 v 20s uh, at one point i don't think it's being used right now unless something very recently changed it could arguably go in e tier um i'm just gonna put it in e tier i mean <laughs> this weapon is so niche for fighting in these tight little corridors where people don't have a lot of room to move around and i think it's just going to be outshined by other weapons in those sort of environments right now and uh, yeah it's just thought no no frost stabs in general aren't in a great place right now so i'm just gonna leave this in e tier and uh yeah sorry frost Dev. next we have the icicle staff this thing is pretty much exclusively used for ZVZs to help disengage from the enemies, um, except it's not as good, in my opinion, at least as other disengaged sorts of tanks and supports. So we'll put it D tier. It is used occasionally, but other things are better than it. So we're going to put it D tier, despite it being used. Next is Permafrost, and Permafrost has always been a staple, like a solid group PvP option, but I'm going to put it in D tier as well, because I don't really like seeing Permafrost anymore. Before, I'd always love seeing a Permafrost. Now, I mean, with the Frost changes, it just doesn't feel as good. Can be successful. Again, there's some really good Permafrost players out there that make it work still, but overall, I'd say it's a pretty bad weapon right now compared to other things. Can be successful, but typically isn't so it goes d tier next we have hoarfrost i have genuinely no idea where to put this i have not seen this one bit since the frost reworks and it got a slight change um, so i'm guessing that it's either e tier or d tier i'm gonna put it in d tier because stuns are really strong and so i think it might have potential uh, but uh it could probably go in e tier i'm not really sure between these two i'm gonna leave it in d tier Next is the one-handed frost. Again, very the pretty much exact same thing as the permafrost. It used to be like the permafrost version of small scale. Um, so as permafrost was used for the larger scale and one hand was used for the smaller scale and solo. Uh, but again, frost stops are just kind of bad right now. And for uh, one-handed frost, again, just doesn't feel that good after the frost changes. So it's going to go in D tier. Probably can be a little bit successful with it, but there are definitely better options out there right now. Lastly, we have the Chill Howl. 
Jill Howell, again, is similar to the Horfrost. I have no idea. I've never really seen anybody use it over the past little while. I'm pretty sure it's an E-tier weapon. Um, it's very similar to the one-handed Frost in his playstyle, except the E is very meta-dependent, I want to say, for like Crypto Dungeons, for example, and I don't think that is right now. So I'm going to put an E-tier. I don't think it's really ever worth using right now over the one-handed Frost, which is already not worth using over something else. Moving on to hammers, starting off we have the Hand of Justice, and I'm going to put this into B tier. Uh, so Hand of Justice is an engage clumping tank for group fights, and it is probably the single most versatile tank weapon for group fights. Uh, definitely a super, super de duper strong weapon, but the reason I'm putting it into B tier instead of A tier is because it's not I couldn't consider this meta-defining. One patch ago, I could consider this meta-defining, but since the changes to Morningstar, as we'll get to, there are other weapons that do its job like just as well as it, or do similar things to it. There's like another good option for clumping engaged tanks with the new air compressor, so it's not as meta-defining as it used to be, meaning it drops down to B tier. Just as good as it used to be, it's just there are also good options now that do what it does as well, so B tier instead of A tier. Next, we have the Great Hammer. I'm going to move the Pole Hammer and the Tomb Hammer here because I like talking about these three hammers all at once. In my opinion, these three hammers are way, way too similar. They basically all do the exact same thing, except ever so slightly differently. Uh, they all have a 15-second cooldown stun on their E from range. One dashes, one shoots that in a line, and one shoots that in a little circle. Um, so they're all basically the same weapon. The one that is used the most right now is the Pole Hammer, and it is pretty good right now, so I'm going to put it in C tier, very good. It's like the go-to hammer for if you're running a hammer in a mid-scale like 10v10 sort of fight or uh, smaller scale, 5v5 probably also the go-to hammer. Um, so it goes into C tier and the other two are going to go into D tier just because they're not the pole hammer. <laughs> in a different meta, like maybe these go up to C and that goes down to D. It's just, they're all basically the same in my eyes. One just gets used is slightly better in the current meta and that one is the pole hammer. Next, we have the one-handed hammer, and this isn't really used at all right now. One-handed hammer excels at the low cooldown stun that it has, and um, with arcanes being really meta right now, there's a lot of cleanses, and so that isn't as valuable as it otherwise would be, so you're not really going to see it in things like 5v5s, or even in the, the open world small-scale fights as much as you uh, might see some other things. So it's, it's definitely not a bad weapon. You can put out a lot of CC, but it is outshined by other things. Next we have the Poglog, and the Poglog is just a classic ZVZ tank weapon, defensive tank weapon, big stun, has inertia ring to slow things down. Um, we're going to put this C tier, I believe. It's just a niche ZVZ weapon. It's like a better icicle, uh, as I was talking about before, for like disengaging from uh, Zergs and stuff. So it's a solid C tier weapon, super niche to ZVZ, it's not really used outside of that. Lastly, for hammers, we have the Forge Hammers, and Forge Hammers received a bunch of changes recently. I think these things have a ton of potential, uh, but not really used right now, and they're super niche, so we're going to put them D tier. Personally, I think they could maybe go up if people really gave them the, the, the shot they deserved. I think they might be C tier, even B tier, but uh, no one really uses them right now, and I don't feel like trying to make them work, so they're, they're going D tier. Next up we have Holy Stabs, and Holy Stabs, I will warn you, I have no idea because Holy Stabs are the only weapon line that I have zero mastery and I've never equipped a Holy Staff in my life, uh, so I don't use them at all, I can only tell you what I see. Uh, and so the ones that I don't see, I'm not really sure if they're going to be D or E tier, so we're just going to kind of guess with those, uh, like the Redemption Staff, is this Redemption Staff? Let me check real quick. It is indeed the Redemption stuff. Good, I got that right. <laughs> um, yeah, that's going E tier. Uh, Aegis does not seem like a very good weapon. Oh no, is this the Bouncy Ball one? This is Bouncy Ball, right? Yeah. Okay, Bouncy Ball can go D tier. Um, it's, yeah, it's okay, but definitely not as good as some others' holy stabs right now. I, I wouldn't really ever want to see somebody running a Redemption stuff outside of like some very, very specific niche situations. Next we have Divine Staff, another one that you literally never see in the meta. I'm pretty sure this one is hot garbage, so we're going to put it into E tier. The ability just does not seem good at all. It seems way too easy to counter, so it's just going to go into E tier. 
Next is Fallen Staff. Fallen Staff is a classic C tier weapon. Similar to the Poglog, it is the ZVZ Holy Staff weapon. Very good for large group fights, but outside of that, pretty much garbage. So it's, it's super niche, but it's really good at what it does. Next we have the Great Holy. Great Holy is not currently meta. It's it's not a bad staff. It's sort of similar to some of the other weapons in D tier where it's not bad, uh, but it is outshined by other options, which we'll get to actually right next. So it's just not really used. Speaking of why it's not used, we have the Hallowfall, which is, ooh, do I wanna put this A tier or B tier? Uh, I'm gonna say probably B tier. No, no, we'll put it in A tier. Uh, so, Hallowfall is like the best sort of group healing weapon for Holy, and, and maybe just in general, honestly, it's probably better than Nature's as well. Hallowfall is just super good. The knockup, the mobility, the amount of heals that you can output with it. Even in ZVZs, you'll see both Fallens and Hallowfalls, uh, because Hallowfalls are just super strong right now. If you're healing in a group environment, Anything over like five people, Hollow Falls definitely, if not the top option, a really solid option. Next, we have the Life Touch stat, Staff, sorry, and this is, I'm going to put this in E tier as well. I never see this one, and it does not seem like it'd be any good. So uh, I really highly doubt that this thing is going to even get to D tier, let alone C tier. Just seems like an overall bad healing staff, so we're putting it into E tier. Last but not least for the Holy Staffs is the One-Handed Holy, and the One-Handed Holy we're going to put into um, C tier? Yeah, we'll put it into C tier. Um, not a good healing staff, but it is good for solo PvP. <laughs> Sadly enough, Holy Staffs are back in solo PvP, and the One-Handed Holy is the option for that. It is quite good in Corrupted Dungeons. Sadly, I'm really sad about that, how how holies are good in 1v1 PvP, but anyways, it is one good in 1v1 PvP, the new holy smite's pretty good for it, and the one-handed holy uses it the best, so it is C tier, niche for 1v1 PvP, but it's pretty good at that. Next we have maces, starting off with the maracas, or the oath keepers. Um, these could maybe go up to C tier, but I'm going to put them in D tier. They're sort of similar to some of the other weapons in D tier, where they're not bad, and you do see them occasionally, but they're not the first option typically. They're they're typically like the sort of second option. Still good, definitely good weapon with a lot of potential, but typically you're going to see other things over it. Um, and yeah, these are pretty much only used for like group fights in PvP that are like 20 mans or so, uh, usually open world fights. Next we have the Morningstar, recently changed to have a dash inside of it now. Um, it used to be really good for like gate camping, uh, now not good for gate camping. Oops, what do I do with that? Not good for gate camping anymore. Now it is very good in ZVZs as an engaged tank with the new air compress and the new dash, as well as really good in different styles of ganking where you're sort of more roaming around and ganking people. It has probably the single best catch of any weapon in the game. So I'm going to put this into, I'm going to say A tier. Honestly, this thing is so strong right now. A lot of people like don't think it's good because of its nerf and its change but it just has a new identity now it's good for different things and it's incredibly good at that it's probably just as good as the hand of justice if you're just looking at zvz's but because it also is just the best catch weapon in the game for something like ganking it goes up an a tier in my opinion super strong weapon at two individual activities uh very meta defining for both Next is a heavy mace, and heavy mace again is going to be another mace in the A tier. This thing is the cl a classic meta defining weapon. Pretty much any sort of group PvP above like five people, so 10v10s plus, you're going to see heavy mace because heavy mace is extremely strong. Purges right now, very strong. Silences, very strong. Just the control that it brings with the OPQs and OPWs that maces have just means this thing just brings so much control in group fights that it's highly valued, highly meta defining, just a super strong weapon. Next is the Camelin Mace, which is like, has been, or in history, it's been like the A tier meta defining ZVZ weapon. Like you, you see Camelin Maces and people drop damage on them stuff. Right now, it's pretty much, in my opinion, it is severely outshined by both the Hand of Justice and the Morning Star. I, if this was my personal tier list, I would put this in the D tier. Uh, but it is still used in ZVZs quite heavily along with the Hand of Justice and the Morning Star, so I'm going to put it in C tier. But in my opinion, if people, I think like three months in the future, if people realize how strong these other two options are compared to it, they're just going to completely get rid of this, especially with like things like Great Arcane in the meta that are really good at countering um, very predictable engages. 
I honestly would never want to see a Camlin right now in a group that I'm running or I'm with. Um, so I would want to put it in D tier, but right now it's still used in CMZ quite a lot. So people like their big red circles, so we'll give it to them. We'll, we'll put it C tier. Next is the Incubus Mace, and this is another mace in the A tier. Incubus Mace is meta-defining not for anything PvP, don't bring this thing to PvP, but for PvE, it is the tank weapon of all tank weapons for PvE. This thing does basically the best. It, it, it is the single best weapon for tanking in PvE. You can't beat it. I mean, it's just so good at what it does. Uh, that The health debuff is just too good on the E. Uh, air compress is very good at clumping things, so very good for group PVM, but or PVE. But outside of that, not really used, but definitely meta defining for that. Next, we have the one handed mace. One handed mace it went in S tier the last time I did this tier list, now it's in D tier. Got a lot of nerfs since then, and a lot of meta changes. It's definitely not a bad weapon. I would not categorize mace as a bad weapon. Um, still has a lot of potential, still pretty good, but is outshined. It can be used in like group PvP as a tank weapon. Its ability as like a solo play weapon and as a DPS weapon has fallen off considerably. It's mainly just a tank weapon right now and there are typically going to be some better options like the heavy mace. So um, it's still good but it's not great. Lastly we have the bedrock mace and last time this was in our F tier and this has actually gone up to D tier. Not that high but it is People have found sort of these weird little ways of using it. It's definitely not a top pick for or like really consistently used for any activity, but it does very rarely sometimes get used in things like ZVZs or there have be, been some comps in like 10v10s, for example, or other like kidnap comps where you use the Bedrock Mace to knock like a healer back or something. So it has seen some use. It is slightly viable if you know what you're doing with it and you have a team that knows what you're going to do with it. Uh, but other than that, just not the best weapon. Also, of course, it is like the weapon they use to knock people into mobs in the static and world boss areas. So, you know, you can use it for that too. Moving on, we have nature staves. First up is, ooh, let's see if I can recognize these new nature icons. This is the blight staff. Blight staff is B tier, I believe. I am going to put it in B tier. Uh, blight staff is like Halifall, basically, except it's a nature staff. It's very good for group pvp healing uh, but you typically don't want too many nature heals the way that uh, just because of the way that healing sickness works so it's probably not quite as good as halifall but it is the nature to go to for large group healing it is extremely strong great like defensiveness on yourself and a lot of healing output so really solid weapon right now Next is the Rampant Staff, and the Rampant Staff could probably go in like C tier, uh, but because of the Blight Staff, if you're going to run Rampant, there's a really good chance that Blight Staff is just better. So, we're putting in D tier. Uh, probably not a bad healing st staff, the healing it outputs can be pretty good, but it is just simply outshined by the Blight Staff. Next we have the Great Nature. I kind of want to put this in A tier, but I'm going to be reserved and put it in B tier. I love the Great Nature Staff. It is incredibly good for 1vxing in PvP, really good in open world PvP. It's probably the single best fame farm weapon, just if you're going for pure fame numbers, because it can solo uh, like group static dungeons and stuff solo faster than any other weapon in the game. Um, but... It's not super heavily used outside of those sorts of things. It can be used in like like open world uh, 2v2 sort of 3v like really small groups in the open world. Uh, but oh, besides that, it's not really used too heavily, but definitely a definitely super strong weapon as I was saying before. I mean, it's PvP potential as a solo and as a small group, extremely high. It's fame farm potential best in the game. So it could honestly maybe go in A tier, but yeah, I'm gonna put it in B tier. Next, we have the Wild Staff. Uh, same thing about Rampant and uh, Blight. Same thing can be said. It's a group healing weapon that's just kind of outshined by the Blight right now. Probably not that bad. It, it's definitely not E tier. At least I don't think it is, but Blight is better. It's probably slightly worse than Rampant as well. Hard to really say between the two, though. You just see Blight. If you're going to see a Nature Staff in a group healing scenario, it's Blight. So it's D tier. Outshined. Next we have Iron Root, and Iron Root is the current 2v2 meta healing stick, so it goes in C tier. Pretty much not really used outside of that. It can be used in the open world in like very, very small groups, similar to the Great Nature, uh, but you don't see it for that as often. You don't really see that activity, period, that often. So uh, it gets in C tier. It's a 2v2 Hellgate weapon. It's really good for that. Outside of that, not super heavily used. 
Next we have the Druidic Staff, and this is going to be our first weapon in the S tier. Druidic Staff is very, very broken right now. It is extremely strong. So Druidic Staff outputs an absurd amount of healing. Pretty much any small group PvP, the healing stuff you will see is Druidic Staff. Like 5v5s, it's always going to be Druidic Staff. Um, anything smaller than that, it's a Druidic Staff. It is just so unbelievably strong for healing small groups right now. The amount of healing it outputs is insane. And it just so happens that it's also super good as like a solo weapon for solo PvP. Very similar to the Great Nature in the open world. Uh, the good self-sustain on the new Thorns is really strong. As well as its ability to solo like group chests. I did a video on how good it is at soloing bosses and stuff. So really good for solo PvE. It's just so good at like everything right now. It's just it definitely needs a nerf. It's super strong. I don't want them to nerf it because I enjoy using it, but but damn, it is it is really OP. Lastly, for nature staffs, we have the normal one-handed nature. And this thing is the best weapon in the game for solo dungeon clears. So for that, it could probably go in C tier, but personally, no one really cares. At least I don't care about solo dungeon clearing. I don't think solo dungeons are even that good to clear right now. So I'm gonna put it in D tier because that's literally all it's good for um, is clearing solo dungeons and don't clear solo dungeons. So put a D tier. Next, we have quarter staffs. Starting off with quarter staffs, we have the Grail Seeker. Grail Seeker is a B tier weapon. It's probably one of the best, if not the best, at disengaging for ZVZs, so a defensive tank for ZVZs. Also very good for ganking, gate camping. As much as I hate gate camping, it's very good for gate camping. Sort of replaces the old Morning Star for that. And it can be used in sort of like solo play a little bit. Not currently in the Corrupted Dungeon meta, but it can be used for Corrupted Dungeons, and it has been meta before. Uh, so just overall a really solid weapon. Not meta-defining, but very, very strong. Next we have just the normal two-handed quarterstaff, and this thing I am going to put into... E tier. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, it's not good. I, I, I don't think you would ever want to run this weapon that's why i'm putting it in each year yeah I, I never see it run I, I can't imagine a situation where i'd run it so it's going in each year definitely not a good weapon right now next is ironclad ironclad is like the second best option for uh tanking in like small scale 5v5s and like uh arenas and um instance content specifically so it's going to go into d tier not bad, definitely can be successful, but there are slightly better options, so we're putting it into D tier. One of those slightly better options, in fact, the slightly better option that's used instead of it, is the Staff of Balance. So it's going to go into C tier. It's pretty much exclusively like a small scale PvP 5v5 sort of tank weapon, but it is quite good for that. The top pick right now, so it's pretty niche, but it is very good for that, so it just goes into C tier. Next is Soul Scythe. Uh, tank weapon for group pvp normally not super great at it right now it is used a little bit in zvz's especially on things like shot callers because it has good defensive ability but uh besides that not really used typically outshun by other weapons as well like the grail seeker so yeah it goes in d tier not a bad weapon but outshined lastly or not lastly for quarter stabs we have the black monk staff Again, D tier, it's sort of similar. Black Monk and um, Staff of Balance are typically used for the same sorts of activities. Right now, Black Monk's not very good compared to something like the Staff of Balance. Has some limited potential, but again, is just outshined. Now, for real, lastly, for the quarter staffs, we have the Double Bladed Staff. Double Bladed Staff, I'm going to put into C tier. It's one of those weapons that has a ton of mobility, so it's never bad. Good on things like gatherers if they want to escape. Also, a very good ganking weapon for catching. It's definitely outshined by things like the Morningstar right now, and the new mounts being super tanky means it's not really useful for solo anymore. It could probably honestly go D tier, but just because of the amount of mobility it has, I'm going to put it in C tier as sort of like a ganking slash escape weapon. It's decent for both of those. Moving on to spears, starting off we have the Heron Spear. I'm going to put the Heron Spear into E tier. Um, just not good right now. I mean, the Heron Spear has not been meta for a very long time. Hasn't received any love either, so it's just sort of E tier. Usually Heron Spear is good when Soldier Armor is good. And right now Soldier Armor is not super good, so Heron Spear is very bad. <laughs> um, it's just, it's outshined by everything really. It's not 
that great of weapon period so uh, it goes in each year next we have the daybreaker this thing is not a bad weapon i like the weapon it's not bad but it's not used for anything currently it's definitely outshined by basically all the other melee weapons so yeah it's d tier not not great but it can be used Next up, we have the Spirit Hunter. I don't know where to put the Spirit Hunter. I'm going to put it into uh, C tier. Uh, it's a ZVZ range DPS sort of weapon. It has a pierce on it, which is decent. Um, but again, it's not quite as good as some of these other range DPS weapons for ZVZs. It can also be used in um, sort of smaller scale open world PvP, but again, isn't as good as other weapons. Could maybe go D tier, but I'm going to put it in C tier because it does have some limited use and it's not that bad of a weapon. Next we have the Pike. Is that the Pike? Yeah, it's definitely the Pike. Pike is going to join the Heron Spear in E tier. Um, just not really a good weapon right now. Pike is just so conditional on certain metas for like solo ganking and for corrupted dungeons. Right now, neither of those really favor the Pike. It sort of maybe can be used for solo ganking, so maybe it could go D, but it's it's definitely highly outshined by other weapons. I'm going to leave it in the E tier. Um, it's just not a great weapon right now, in my opinion. Next up is the Trinity Spear, and personally, I would put this into D tier, uh, but I'm going to put it into C tier because... Uh, Trinity Spear is like the Corrupted Dungeon Spear. It is one of the most popular weapons for Corrupted Dungeons right now. However, it's not that good. It does have a good win rate, but that's only because it is super forgiving and easy to play. It is one of the easiest weapons to play in Corrupted Dungeons. The reason I would put it in D tier is because any competent opponent will probably beat you on Trinity Spear, assuming they're not in a really bad matchup. Uh, but it is super easy to play, it is super forgiving, and it is pretty good in Corrupted Dungeons, so I'll put it in C tier as that sort of niche, popular Corrupted Dungeon meta pick. Next up we have the Glaive, very limited viability, sort of like the second or third option for 5v5s if you're running a kidnap comp, would often be used alongside things like the Ironclad, um, using the sort of kidnap comps, which are not the top tier comps in small scale 5v5 right now. So it is D tier, not a bad weapon, has potential. You can still run those comps and be successful, but it isn't currently the meta. So it goes into D tier. Lastly, we have one of my favorite weapons, the one-handed spear. Uh, this is going to go up into B tier. It's very similar to the bear paws right now. Super strong for open world PvP and ganking. Probably slightly worse for PvP in terms of the solo aspect. Slightly better for ganking in terms of the solo aspect. Bear paws are much better for group play. But one hand spear again is a super good fame farm weapon for solo players. So um, they're very comparable. It's definitely a super good overall weapon, but definitely not good enough to be meta defining or uh, not a, not an A tier weapon by any means right now but an overall solid B tier weapon. Next, we are looking at swords, and for the first sword is the Carving Sword. Carving Sword's probably fallen out a little bit since the last time I did this. I think it was A tier last time. It's probably a solid B tier right now. It's a generic sword that can be used for so many things, but isn't like the best or that meta-defining for anything. Um, no comp really uses a carving sword that often or that popularly. However, I don't want to classify it as a C weapon or even a D weapon because it is super strong and has a ton of versatility. It's a decent solo weapon. It's always good in group PvP, especially in the open world. So I'm going to put it as a B tier. It's a good weapon, but uh, definitely not A tier, not matter to find not used super, super heavily. Next we have the Broadsword. Broadsword is a C tier niche Corrupted Dungeon weapon. It's very good for Corrupted Dungeons in the meta right now. Uh, definitely a top tier option, but pretty much anything outside of that, you're not going to see a Broadsword. It's not going to be good. So it is a niche option for Corrupted Dungeons, so it goes into C tier. Next up we have the Clarent Blade, which is a weapon that does way too much damage. Um, however, instead of going to like A tier, it's going to go into B tier. The Clarent Blade and the Demon Fang are very similar weapons. However, Demon Fang is going to be used in a lot of comps over the Clarent Blade because it does not need to stack to do its damage where the Clarent Blade does. Um, so the Demon Fang can just go out and do its damage instantly, whereas the Clarent Blade has to stack, meaning the one-shot comps that are popular right now in like 10v10s and stuff are going to use Demon Fangs instead of Clarent Blades. So it has a little bit more versatility than the Clarent Blade, meaning it goes A tier and Clarent Blade goes B tier. Uh, for like 
open world large scale CVZ PvP and stuff though, I'd say they're just as good as each other. Definitely really solid option. Clarin Blade is super strong in that sort of environment, so a very good weapon B tier. Next we have the Claymore. Claymore is going to go into A tier because Claymore is extremely good for both corrupted dungeons, sort of like 1v1 environment and 2v2 environments. It is the top pick for 2v2 Hellgates. It's one of the top picks for corrupted dungeons. It's very meta defining for that sort of solo small scale uh, high damage burst damage weapon. Meta defining for that so it goes A tier. Next we have the dual swords. SBI has absolutely no idea what to do with the dual swords. Every time they change them, they seem to become even worse. Uh, right now, not a good weapon. I'm going to put them in E tier. They could arguably have a place in D tier because I have seen them used in corrupted dungeons to some pretty decent success. However, I do believe that is because they're a sword and not because they're dual swords. Um, because the Claymore and the Broadsword are some of the two best weapons for corrupted dungeons and so you wouldn't want to use the dual swords over them although i have seen some people use them over them not a good weapon the e on these things is just not good in my opinion you wouldn't ever really want to run these i, I think they're just bad so they're going easier next we have the galatine pair this is like the classic niche zvz sword where you do the super big clap and then die because you don't really have anything else. Uh, I'm going to put them in D tier. They're not super heavy used in ZVZs right now, uh, from what I can see, so we're not going to put them in C tier. They probably generally are going to float between C and D, depending on the ZVZ meta and how good they currently are. Right now, I don't really see them, so they're going in D tier. Lastly, for swords, we have the Kingmaker, and this is, again, going to go into D tier. It can do some pretty big claps. It's a, it's a pretty nice weapon. The knockup's always good, but Clarion Blade exists. And so in any like environment where you'd want to be using a sword, uh, where you'd be want to be using Kingmaker, like group PvP, there's a really good chance Clarion Blade is just strictly better than it. So not a bad weapon, but definitely outshined by things like the Clarion Blade. So it is in D tier. Last but not least, we have War Gloves. And for our War Gloves, starting off, we have the Fists of Avalon. These could maybe go into C or D tier, I'm not really sure. They're pretty much only used for corrupted dungeons. They have some limited viability in like solo open world. I'll put them in C tier because they are quite good for corrupted dungeons right now. Not, I, I wouldn't say like top meta for corrupted dungeons, but they are definitely close to it. And they do have some limited viability in things like open world, as I said, in very small group or solo. So we'll put them in C tier. Next is the Raven Strikes. Raven Strikes I'm going to put in D tier. Um, they got nerfed too heavily. They used to do way too much damage and were like way too strong for ZVZs. Now they don't do enough damage. Having one of them in a Zerg is never bad for that giant knockup. Uh, but yeah, they're not, they're not, they don't do enough damage to justify using them typically. So they're going to go into D tier. Next is the Hellfire Hands. I'm a big fan of these things. These things do a ton of damage with their combo, but they are going in D tier. The problem that Hellfire Hands have is they don't really slot very well into any sort of activity in Albion at the moment. The only ones that they could like realistically be used for is like Corrupted Dungeons, uh, where that's a nice 1v1 balanced environment. However, they're not currently super meta for that. They would require a pretty cheesy and rock, paper, scissors -y build if you're going to use them. So... They go in D tier. They definitely have a ton of potential, but their combo is too easy to interrupt for group play, so I'm going to put them in D tier. They do a ton of damage, definitely have super high potential, but I am struggling to see where you would use them. Next, we have the Brawler Gloves. I really like Brawler Gloves as well. I'm really a big fan of Brawler Gloves, uh, but very similar to Hellfire Hands. They don't really slot super well into any specific activity. I'd usually prefer to see other sorts of gloves instead of them. If you know what you're doing with them, they can be extremely strong in some like small group play, even some mid-scale group play, especially in things like the open world. Their combo does a bunch of damage and provides a ton of CC, so they have a ton of potential, but uh, I you really don't see them at all right now. Okay for Corrupted Dungeons, can definitely be good for Corrupted Dungeons too. You can maybe slot them in C tier because they're pretty versatile, but I'm going to put them in D tier just because you really don't see them at all right now. Another weapon with a ton of potential, but sort of struggles to find its activity that it's good in. Next we have the Battle Bracers. These things are going to go into uh, C tier. Battle Bracers, 
with the one-handed spear and the bear paws are like the kings of solo open world right now um but outside of that the battle bracers aren't really good whereas the bear paw and the one-handed spear have some uses outside of that battle bracers don't which is why they go in c tier instead of b tier um yeah they're really only good for solo open world for that they are extremely good but oh really only for that they're niche so they go c tier next we have spiked gauntlets and these are going to go all the way up into a tier the current meta, as I've said before, for like group PvP 10 man plus is to one-shot things, either one-shot one person or one-shot many people with clump and dump, and spiked gauntlets are a big reason as to why this exists. You can one-shot tanks, for example, because spiked gauntlets do so much damage to tanks, meaning they're incredibly valuable for this style of gameplay, and so they are meta-defining A tier. Lastly, we have the Ursine Maulers, and not to leave on a low note, these are going in the E tier. Oh, no, sorry, they're going in the D tier, not the E tier. They're not that bad. Um, Ursine Maulers are pretty much exclusively a ZVZ DPS weapon right now, and I'm pretty sure they're outshined by pretty much all the other ones above here, like the Longbow and stuff. I wouldn't really like to see too many of these or see them too much, so they're going in D tier. They have potential, they do a ton of damage, but it's so conditional over time and stuff and not getting cleansed or uh i framed out of it so not that great with the great arcanes coming in to the meta more they might actually just go all the way down to d tier and never used but we'll have to see as great arcane's still pretty new so they're going in d tier not a great weapon right now um has potential but definitely gets outshined and countered pretty easily okay so that is all of the weapons in albion ranked a couple notes here just to close us off due to the way that i set up the tiers i would never really want to see anything in the f tier or in the s tier just based on how i set up the categories so it's pretty nice that we only have one thing in s tier and absolutely nothing in f tier it's a good sign for albion's balance team that they have nothing that absolutely needs a nerf and nothing that's just so laughable it's just pretty much a meme so the 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 top and the bottom of the balance for weapons right now is seemingly pretty pretty good the middle on the other hand in my opinion there's way too many things in like d tier uh too many things that aren't like that i would not want to see ever really used because there are better options um i definitely want to see a lot of these weapons buffed especially if they want an e tier to be buffed either up into d tier or into c tier i'd like to see more weapons on c tier and like b tier than the ones in d tier right now so the middle's struggling a little bit after the especially like the frost reworks a lot of frost staves and fire staves and stuff into the d tier uh so it'd be nice to see a little bit of the middle balancing out and having some things getting buffed up into these better tiers but overall i'm not too disappointed with the balance so I guess to end us off, I'm just going to go over what I think are some of the best weapon lines in the current meta in the game right now, and then also what are some of the worst weapon lines in the game. So starting us off with the best weapon lines, obviously we have to look at nature stabs. They are so represented in this S, A, B tier. There's always going to be a nature staff in a PvP scenario. Basically, all metas, excluding like 1v1 PvP, will have a nature staff being used as the healing staff. Not to mention, they're also super good at fame farming. So, I mean, nature staffs are just incredible right now. They'll definitely get nerfed. But if you're going to choose a weapon line to like main right now, nature staffs are a great option. Another great weapon line right now is maces. I mean, maces have been staple meta tank weapons for such a long time. The Qs and Ws on maces are completely busted, which is a big reason why. But I mean, you can see in A tier, we have Morningstar, Heavy Maced, and Incubus Mace. Like any group activity, fame farming, PvP, maces are going to be top tier for. At least one of the maces will be top tier for. If you like group PvP or group play in general, even for fame farming, you can use maces and you'll be pretty set. Lastly, for really strong weapon lines right now, I just, I think I gotta give it to Arcane. The new Arcane reworks, they're super good now as a DPS weapon, and they still have that sort of super good support playstyle, tons of different options to support your team. So in PvP, and they're pretty good at fame farming now as well, not top tier, but uh, yeah, Arcanes are definitely super, super duper strong right now. So Arcane's another great one in the current meta. Looking at the current worst weapon lines, well, they're completely defined, I think, by recent changes and reworks to the magic staves. The magic staves reworked pretty much not only healing sticks, but basically all the other magic staves are some form of ranged DPS. And so ranged DPS has the most variability between weapon lines, between which ones are good and which ones are bad right now. I think it's going to take a lot more time for that to sort of shape up. 
crossbows, for example, a pretty old weapon line that hasn't received pretty much any updates recently, you can tell it's just not good right now. Basically, all of the crossbows are sitting in D tier. Energy Shapery super niche crossbow is sitting in B tier. It's still really good. But besides that, I mean, crossbows basically got nothing going for them. They're a pretty bad weapon line right now, just completely outshined by like the new Arcane reworks. On the other hand, we have a newly updated weapon line in the Frost Stabs, pretty much sitting exclusively in D and E tier with just one Great Frost in C tier. Frost Stabs rework did not do them well. It's hard to say whether the new rework made them bad or just changed their identity and changed what they're good at. One thing is clear is that the old style of Frost is not good right now. Maybe there's a new style of Frost with the new abilities that is good, just people haven't realized it yet or gotten good at it. Maybe they are better than I'm giving them credit for or than people realize and don't use them in the meta. But uh, for now, I mean, they just don't look good. They can't do what they used to do. So yeah, they're just not a good weapon line right now. They're going to need some love. Lastly, for the worst weapon lines in the current state of the game, I think I gotta give it to Fire. Quarterstaff is maybe a contender, but Fire is not looking too good either. Most of the Fire weapons just don't really have a place in the meta. There's a couple that are like C tier here, but they're super niche, like Brimstone's exclusively ZVZ. Blazing Staff is exclusively Fame Farm. So for the vast majority of things in the game, Fire Staffs are just completely outshined by other weapons. They're probably in a better state than I would say the Frost and the Crossbows are right now, uh, but definitely not one that I'd be looking to pick up right now. Anyways, in an attempt to make this video not too, too long, we're going to call it there. There's tons of more things I could obviously say about all the weapons, but I don't got time for that. You don't got time for that. So if you enjoyed this video, let me know, and uh, I will see you in the next one.